Each day for me is, is such a great, great opportunity. These days, Phoenix resident John Taylor has a new outlook on life. I was diagnosed with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which is a, uh, an inherited form of genetic emphysema. Uh, I went very quickly from being normal, active, to struggling for breath when I did simple household chores. Three years ago, he received a double lung transplant. I woke up from the surgery, Olivia, feeling different than I felt two days before. I could automatically breathe better. John got his new lungs when 22-year-old Colorado native Joe Templeton suddenly died. Joe's mother says her son made a conscious decision to become an organ donor long before his life ended. All of our journeys changed on January 1st, 2008. Joe's decision changed all of our lives for the better and brought total strangers together in a wonderful way. I just didn't, don't think he knew how many lives he would affect when he made the decision to be a donor. Today, John is able to compete in triathlons and live a normal life with his wife, Kathy. John still keeps in touch with Joe's family, and while this story has a happy ending, not every story will. So those are all 100,000 people who are waiting for that. Sadly, about 16 or 17 of those people die on average every single day. Research shows one organ donor can save as many as eight lives and one tissue donation can help as many as 50 people. Joe stays alive through me and I stay alive because of Joe. Uh, we have a real unique friendship, someone who I never met, but who I, I feel so closely bonded with. They've got a responsibility to, to he and his family as, as well as to myself. So that's probably the thing that Joe and I share the most on a daily basis, aside from every breath that I get to take. Every breath is so important, as we know. Here we are on the last day of the month, but April is National Organ Donor Month. And John Taylor joining us here in studio this morning to talk about the importance of organ donation. I'm so glad you're here um, because, you know, one of the first stories I remember when I first moved out here to Arizona six years ago was covering uh, organ transplant and the families meeting coming together. And you've been there, done that. And a lot of people don't know how many people are waiting and waiting and how many people never get that organ transplant that they need. As, as active as Arizonans are, and we have 1.7 million Arizonans who have registered as donors, so they, we've done a terrific Which job in the state, yeah. uh, and that's a credit to the Donor Network of Arizona, uh, but there's 110,000 plus in the United States who are currently awaiting for life-saving transplants, and there'll be fewer than 30,000 transplant surgeries in the country this year, uh, and those numbers are pretty consistent year to year, so the numbers head in the wrong direction, and that's why it's so important not only that people become organ donors, but that they make sure that their family is aware. Uh, you never want to have a family in a situation where they have to make a decision at the worst possible time. Sure. And That's that the last thing they need to worry about. The greatest thing that my donor, uh, Joe Templeton, did, uh, in addition to saving my life, was making sure that his family was aware of his, his wishes to, to be an organ donor and save as many lives as he could. Here you are now, and you just recently had a checkup. How are you doing? I, I'm very, very fortunate. I'm doing great. Uh, my most recent checkup has my lung function in the 90 94%. Range. That's fantastic. That's, uh, it's, it's, we could pull people off the street. And mine would be better than uh, than theirs, and, and that's all thanks to the, the doctors and the staff and, and, of course, Joe. What would you say to people out there who, you know, just are still maybe hesitant in becoming a donor, saying, I don't know about that thought. It just feels strange, you know, to, to and a lot of people are in that same boat because I've, I've talked to people about why they don't become a donor. You know, we're all afraid of the unknown. Sure. And, and so, and that's that's the greatest thing, and I'm sure that's the greatest stumbling block for people. But I think the thing that I would say to most people, and I, and I actually say it to them when we do donor signups, is if you would save a life, could you? Mm -hmm. Now, most everyone Who would, would say, say yes, no, they right? would. Exactly. Well, if you would save a life now, why wouldn't you save a life at a point where your life is is over? And uh, it's it's the greatest gift you can ever give to someone. And uh, it, the, the good that can be done, one donor, uh, one organ donor can save as many as eight lives. One tissue donor can heal and save as many as 50 people. We're looking at pictures right now, uh, many posters with Joel. Are, are these, what are these pictures from? These are from the uh, annual donor dash, which is held each July just outside of Denver. That's where Joe grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, these are his family, friends, and coworkers who came together to join us and participate in the 5K that day. Uh, it's a great opportunity for people to get together, to remember their donors, to show support to other donor families. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful event. Last year we had over 3,500 people uh, participate in the event. And I know from talking to families who have lost a loved one who went on to donate, 
they couldn't ask for a better gift for themselves and to help in the healing to know that their their loved one who was lost is saving lives. That's the part that really astonishes me, Tess. I, I was I, when I first met Joe's family, uh, and I don't have any children. I'm not sure that having lost my 22 year old son. I'd be that excited about meeting the 50-year-old stranger sure. that he saved. Uh, and not only that, that these folks then again participate in, in uh, donor registry and in speaking to groups around the They're around living the it every day. For, for me, when I got the call, of course, it's a moment of great joy when the recipient gets a call. Uh, when the donor family gets that call, often it's the beginning of, of a grief that, that you and I can't even imagine. And, and so for them to, to revisit that, they're, they're so strong and so courageous. It's, it's just, a, uh, it, it, it really buoys me uh, and helps me to go out there and, and uh, spread the word. Well, you're a shining example of what organ donation can certainly do. So thank you for sharing your story. I know you make it a point now to speak to groups, speak to children, speak to families, and that's just wonderful. How can folks learn more about organ donation. What's the best way? The easiest way to learn about organ donation, of course, is through the Donor Network of Arizona. You go to dnaz.org is their website. You can even give them a call the old-fashioned way, 1-800-94-DONOR. Uh, if you'd like questions that you wanted to address to me specifically uh -huh. or have me come out and speak to your civic group, whatever it might be, uh, you can reach me through Facebook at Reaching New Heights. Okay. Uh, we'll put all that in. I know it's a lot yeah. of information, okay. but we'll put it all on azfamily.com so folks can uh, get all that info. You, you give me a chance, Tess. I'm just going to keep giving <laughs> <laughs> Social security, that, home phone that, number, that, highway. That's right. You guys can come for dinner next Wednesday. <laughs> John, continued good health to you. Thank you so and much. And good luck in all that you are doing because it's awesome to see so much success. Thanks, I all appreciate right. it. Let's check in with Brittany right now. The time is 8.19 and switching.